Welcome to the in-depth look at the Psycho movies. This segment is Psycho 3 1986. This was recorded on September 12, 2010, on the 18th anniversary of the death of Anthony Perkins. Your radio hosts are myself, Alex Edwards, and Michael J. Psycho 3. Here's why I like Psycho 3. Yes. In part 1, Psycho 1 was basically an intro into the whole thing. We find out who Norman Bates is, the whole mother thing, the whole first kill, now we find out he's a killer. We get the whole ambiance of the base motel, all the wacky hijinks that go on in the movie. We try to find out, is he going to get caught? Are the people going to trip him up? He's stuttering. Oh, no, they're going to catch him. Uh, all this stuff, will he get away with it? Will he get away with it? Will he get away with it? Bam, they just infiltrate his house. Things hit the fan, and things go bad. Norman gets caught. Okay, so that's what that movie was about. Psycho 2, the whole point was Norman's back. After 22 years, he's back, he's back, he's back. Now we got Lila and her daughter trying to make him go crazy again. Hence, they find out he's not actually even killing people. He couldn't have because she was with him during this time or that time. It was all focused, though, on making him go crazy. Let's make him crazy. Let's get revenge, revenge, revenge. Okay, fine. Psycho 3 is just another day at the Bates Motel. Right. We always wondered, wow, it would be so cool. Wouldn't you stay at the Bates Motel? Wouldn't you stay there? Yeah. Yeah, that would be cool. Okay, well, guess what? Because you want to be there just at a normal night. So in Psycho 3, we get to see what happens on a, on a, on a normal night at the Bates Motel. So mm-hmm. the football team, they're having a big game against Fairville and someone else. They stay there. Fairville and Central, that was the game. That's right. That's right. Some people don't go home. It's just another night at the base motel. Very cozy. Norman's back in the swing of things. He got the mother in the window again. I don't know how he has the balls to do that after all that's happened. And now that people are missing, and I don't know. But he does it anyway. Doesn't care. He's obviously crazy again. And at this point, he's doing the he's doing the killing again. He's mother has taken over because now that he has mother physically in the chair in the window, now Norman is completely back to what he was in Psycho 1. Right. So now we get to see what happens on a normal basis. Okay. How do you feel about the religious subtext? Um, the quotes like, there is no God, the whole thing that she's a nun, Jesus being on the dashboard of um, Duke's car, right. um, the suicide, it's to, to uh, kill yourself, it's a sin, and all the religious stuff. How, how do you feel about that being in this movie? Well, I mean, it just says that Maureen, that she, in a way, was just like Norman. Uh, She didn't know, not that she was crazy, but she didn't know where she fit in life. And she really didn't have anything in life. It's funny uh, to say that. Another dual identity, isn't it? In a sense, yes. She's a a nun, Mm -hmm. and she also craves the um, touch of uh, flesh. Right. And she she wants to kill herself. She she devotes her life to God, and then she also, at the same time, goes to take God's greatest gift from you away. Right. This is Anthony Perkins' directorial debut. Norman Bates himself directed Psycho 3. I think he did a really good job. Uh, in an interview, Anthony Perkins, uh, just before his death, admitted he was not up to the task of directing the movie because he felt he didn't have the technical knowledge, and it, he's... His knowledge was just too limited. How do you feel he did, even though he had his own doubts, and it was his debut? A lot of directors, Mike, their first film is terrible. Right. Uh, I don't think it was a terrible film. I uh, I think he handled it quite well. I mean, it still has, um, you know, it has the atmosphere of uh, the first film. I can't really say the second, because the second was a different movie. Like I said, it was kind of like he started out, you know, sane and then kind of um, drifted uh, back into darkness. And it's like the third one were put into, you know, right in the darkness, and then it goes to, you know, him trying to get redemption or, or something like that. It's funny you said that. You're very... I love having you as a co-host tonight. You bring up a lot of interesting points, and one of them is this. You said that Psycho 3 is a lot like Psycho 1. Well, guess what, Mike? When Anthony Perkins was told he was going to um, be in control of the movie, he suggested that the movie be shot in black and white as an homage to the original Psycho. 
but Universal opposed it. Right. And they were right to do so. I think they did the right decision. It was nice that uh, Anthony wanted to make it, you know, whatever. I don't think it would have worked. Uh, yeah, I kind of agree with that. I don't, I don't, yeah, I definitely don't think it would have worked. You know, it was definitely a nice thought. It just, it, it, it does, it definitely has the same feel to it, I think. Yeah. I love the, I love the feel to it. The music was great. One of my favorite scenes ever is the scene, I hope everybody remembers it, who's a fan of the movie. During the, uh, the kids hanging out with the football thing, hanging out in the motel, you see a, uh, a black and white TV going, and it does like these people in the water, like heavy, heavy, you know, currents. I don't know, the boats are going crazy, and then they pan over to Norman sitting in the windowsill. Remember that? Yep, I know that shot. That's a beautiful shot. That and is on a nice, cool summer night. Just you know, during my crazier times in life, I, when I'm single and I'm not so occupied, my mind goes to other places, and and one of them is being sort of in my own world and crazy and misunderstood. And I feel like I would rather do nothing in the world than be in that motel, running the motel and living in that house and having my mother, my dead mother, in, in the window, sitting in a chair. And I would feel completely comfortable. And it would be like the greatest, nice life. And and that picture of him sitting in the window sill is like captures all that in one thing for me. I have a staring right now at my Bates Motel uh, sign that's lit up vacancy in my window at my apartment. My landlord loves that. I'm sure. <laughs> no one actually came over here to uh, check in. No. I don't think they would have if it was a real base motel sign. Right. <laughs> okay, well, let's see. Let's get back into the movie. I, got, I pulled something from Fangoria Magazine, and this is what uh, I was talking about earlier. Mm. How the movie... Uh, Psycho 3 was supposed to be very different. You mentioned it would have been different with Mary Lewis. Check this out. Here's what it was supposed to be. According to Fangoria Magazine, issue number 57, in the original script, Dwayne, who was the killer, had intentionally come to the Bates Motel because he was obsessed with Norman. Maureen was a neurotic psychologist who had come to the motel to replace Dr. Raymond from Part 2. They intended the original victim, Janet Lee to be a part of the cast. Universal rejected it, arguing that Norman should be the killer and Janet Lee was wrong for the film. However, Maureen's actions remained virtually unchanged and her character was merely changed to a young nun. So, Dwayne was supposed to be the killer and he was going to emulate Norman Bates' crime. How do you feel? How would you feel if the movie went in that direction? It would definitely be different. So you're saying that the... Uh, I don't know if I would have liked it that much, you know, if it right. would have went yeah. down that road. We were able to get over the fact that in Psycho 2, Norman was not the killer. Right. But we did get a nice, we got a nice bang at the end. Yeah, we did. Well, he might have killed uh, Duke in Psycho 3, regardless, mm -hmm. at the end, because uh, they probably would have made Norman the hero, much like right. they did with Arnold Schwarzenegger in Terminator 2. We go from he's the bad guy to the good guy. Now, in horror movies, the world is known for cheering on the good guy, uh, the bad guys, anyway. Right. I mean, I don't see Jason not getting cheers and Michael, Freddy. I think a lot of people laughed and clapped when Norman banged that lady over the head. And... You know, but, what, but another point um, that I want to make is, okay, if they were going to make Duke uh, come in there and, and be the, the killer from the second one, maybe who wanted to or make Duke be the killer from this one who wanted to emulate Norman, okay. Then then what would we say happened with Norman at the end of, of 2 when he killed Mrs. Spool, his quote-unquote real mother? Um, are we just as an audience supposed to ignore that like it never happened? I guess we were supposed to take that and just say, um, well, he killed her, replaced the corpse in the window. Right, so then are we supposed to say then that in Psycho 3, okay, then... Norman is insane, but Duke is also insane. So we have two crazy people. Yes. Which, in my mind, wouldn't have made for a good film. I'm glad they didn't go that route. I think if Psycho went, Psycho Three went that route. Um, that's that's my thought. Yeah. Duke had a lot of fun, and I think one of his greatest scenes of the movie uh, that he had most fun with was. Um, I'm 
sure you sure remember this that whole scene. Where oh yeah, um, totally. Um, now was there not was there not like behind the scenes thing where Anthony Perkins did want him completely nude in that scene? And yes, one of them nude behind the two lamps, partially cover himself. But Jeff Fahey felt too uncomfortable being nude on camera. Right, you are absolutely right. As many know, the girl that he picked up after one lousy drink mm-hmm. was the redhead from Friday the 13th Part 5. Right. A stuntman, Kurt Paul, played Mother in the scene when um, Mother goes to kill uh, Maureen, and she mm-hmm. already slit her wrist. So once again, Norman uh, Anthony Perkins does not play a mother, his mother, in a Psycho movie. So it was the second time in a row that this happens, and uh, that's why we never get to see Mother's face on screen. Her face is always blacked out, and all you see is the light from the background, you know? It's always hidden in the shadows. And that's why, because Norman never plays her. However, as we all know, at the very end of the movie, which I'll play a clip from after I give, uh... Hey, you know what? I can go ahead and do that. I'll give the clip now. Okay. This is Mrs. Spool, really, Norman's mother. <laughs> well, turns out that, um, Tracy Venable did a lot of research went to a lot of places and, and talked to a lot of people. And this is what she finds out. And this is the only time that you see Norman Bates in his mother's outfit besides the very end of part one. And he talks in his mother's voice on camera. This is the scene that explains Will Norman's mother. What set you off again, Norman? Mrs. Bull? You killed her, didn't you? What did she do? Come to you and tell you that she was your mother? She... She was crazy, Norman, but she wasn't your mother. Neither are you! Mrs. Fall was your aunt, Norman. She was in love with your father. But your mother stole him away from her! Mrs. Fall killed your father in a jealous rage and kidnapped you when you were just a find out that Norman's father died of bee sting, unless Mrs. Spool threw a beehive at his head. Hmm. Or, like I said one other time, he was the camper in uh, Sleepaway Camp 1 who had the beehive dropped in the toilet <laughs> while he was taking a dump. Right. There's no continuity. There's a big continuity error there. Right. Uh, by the way, when she, if that was the case and she dumped a beehive while he was taking a crap... <laughs> Um, we do have a, a, a cut from that, actually. This shit box is gross. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was actually, that was him. Yeah. I, th- I think that must have been what happened. There, there, there's a little hole in that in that whole thing. So anyway, Universal felt the film needed a better ending with more of a twist. Um, so Anthony Perkins was called back to shoot the final scene. We're not really sure if it's, uh, I, think, I think what they're saying is the scene where um, he pulls the dead mother's hand out while he's in the back of the car and smiles at the camera. Right. And, and that was a nice homage to look at the camera like he did at the end of part one. Another one was um, you actually see uh, Mary's book from Psycho 2 titled In the Belly of the Beast. It's right. laying in the dirt by Norman's house in Psycho 3. Yes. Here's some sad news. During the filming of Psycho 3, my favorite Psycho, right. Anthony Perkins was diagnosed HIV positive. Oh, during the filming of it. Yes, when he went for a routine medical examination. And we all know that's how he died. Yes. So, unfortunately, during, I think, his high point, favorite character of mine, he heard the worst news of his life, which ended up being the downfall. Oh, God, I'm kind of bummed out just by thinking about it. Okay, Mike, give us your overall breakdown of Psycho 3. How'd you like the music? How'd you like the story? How'd you like the directing? And how'd you like the characters? Well, the characters, again, here are an A-plus, and unlike you, I also liked, uh, I, I mean, I liked uh, Diana uh, Scarwood, um in the role of uh, Maureen Coyle. I thought Tracy Venable was also a very good character. Uh, Duke is probably uh, my favorite uh, supporting 
character, but I think, and you may disagree, but I think this was probably the best performance that um, Anthony Perkins uh, put in as um, Norman. I the music don't, was, what's that? I don't disagree. It was just a very different performance. If you notice, he was very nervous right. in this one. He stuttered almost every line. Right. But see, um, I think that that was, I think that that was part of the character trying to just deal with, with, you know, what was going on. I mean, he was in madness again. And like in the first one, he didn't want to get caught. He wanted to hide that other self, the other personality from the rest of the world. And the reason he stuttered was because he wanted, he wanted to try to keep himself in check, I guess, and he got nervous around people. It's much right. like the first one. His performance in three kind of mirrors the first one a lot. Right. Oh, I, I don't. I don't disagree. And I'm not even saying um, I, I didn't like it. I think the reason the guy is nervous in part three. Mm -hmm. what, what's going on? He killed Miss Spool. He's wondering if anyone will find out. I'm sure at some point. He went to stab Maureen in the shower and kill her because Mother thought she was a pig or a slut, whatever you want to call it. Right. So he ends up saving her. Now, you know what's really interesting about that scene? At what point did Mother leave and Norman come in and save Maureen? I, I think it was when he opened up that curtain and saw that she had already, like, tried to kill herself and she had slit her wrists and she was bleeding. I think at that point, um, scared little boy that was inside of Norman kind of came out and kind of, you know, um, held back the... the the darker mother personality. Yes. It, it must have been an interesting mind trip mm -hmm. that uh, Norman took at that point. Yes. What I want to say about it, great movie, great rewatchability, um, really got me into the franchise, like really locked me in. Um, I know you're probably thinking I'm crazy because I put it above Psycho 1. Now, I'm not saying it's a better movie or anything like that. I know. Hey, listen, I like I like Cabin Boy. With Chris Elliott. I think it's one of the best movies in the world. It's horrible. It's, it's a comedy, but it's probably known as one of the dumbest things ever created. But I like it. You know, I don't care if Stanley Kubrick directed it or John Carpenter or whatever. And, uh, hey, it's not so bad that Norman Bates directed it. But I'm just saying I'm not like a connoisseur of the greatest films exactly. I, you know, I, let's face it. Anybody who likes horror doesn't exactly have the best taste. Is Friday the 13th Part 3 or 5 or seven really good movies, or do we just like them because Jason's in them, and they're horror, and we're already a part of it, we're already invested in it. They're not right. really good movies, they're not actually good. And Halloween, four is okay, five is horrible, mm -hmm. six is okay, but you like it more because, you know, sentimental reasons. Probably. Technically, it's, yeah, technically it's not a good movie, it's not up for any Oscar nominations, right? Nothing. Right. But we like it, and that's all that, that really matters, okay. So, I'm just going to say that. So, people, if you think I'm crazy for liking it above one, just really think about it a little more. Mm -hmm. Well, that's about it. So, we're wrapping up. That's the end of the in-depth look at Psycho 3 1986. Be sure to check out the in-depth review of Psycho 4 1990.